In this video we're going to show you how to create dimensions in the software. We're going to start with a file that was drawn in another tutorial and then we're going to ultimately end up with what you can see on the screen here. It's worth noting that the level of dimensioning within the software is not intended to make it a full drafting or engineering drawing program but to provide you with enough tools to add value to your vectors, perhaps to aid your memory or to provide you with something you can print out to help with machining. Let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software. Let's start by loading the file that we're going to use. I'm going to click on open an existing file and from the dimensions project folder I'm going to select the vectors that we created in the widget tutorial. Go ahead and hit open. The tool to add dimensions is found under the Create Vectors area of the Drawing tab and here you can see the icon Add Dimensions to the 2D Drawing. If we click on that you can see there are a variety of different types of dimensions which I'll work through in a moment and then also we can control the text that's created with the dimensions as well. In addition to that, at the bottom here, we can choose either to place the dimensions that we're going to create on the current layer, the currently selected layer, or we can activate to put them on a special layer of their own and specify a name for that. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to place the dimensions on a layer called dimensions, which would make them easier to access, switch on and switch off once we've created them. The first time we create a dimension, we're probably going to want to check to see things like the font, the text height and the number of decimal places look correct. So at this point I'm just going to create kind of a test one to take a look at those settings. So I've got length dimension picked here. I'm going to just take the choices here, true type font, times new roman, quarter inch text height, four decimal places and an offset of 0.1 of an inch. And I'm just going to click one point in the drawing click another point in the drawing and then just move that up and then click there. So I can see that my text is probably a little big. Uh, I probably don't need that many decimal places, but the offsetting, which is sort of the distance between um, where the text and the line is going to appear looks okay. So what I might do is just hit Control Z in order to undo that dimension. I'm going to come over here and potentially let's pick a more simple font so maybe let's head up to Arial put in a text type of maybe 0.15 change this to three decimal places and then I'm just going to click again in the drawing three points in order to take a look at that so I'm pretty happy with the way that looks particularly for the size of this drawing here again if you wanted to you could continue to adjust those values until you, you had something that was suitable for the particular example that you wanted to dimension. Again in this case I want to undo that one I created there so I'm going to hit Control Z in order to get rid of that and now we'll work through and actually create some of the dimensions using the different tools that we've got. So this length dimension option that we've uh, been working with here allows us to pick any two points that the software will measure the length between regardless of whether it's horizontal, vertical or otherwise. So for instance if we wanted to we could snap to the centre point of this circle here and click to define the first point, snap to the centre point of this circle here and click to define that point there, then move this out and wherever I click now is going to define where that dimension will be placed on the drawing. So if I click there we can see that dimension put in there and it shows me the distance between the centre of those two holes. So you can see from that how important it is to make sure that you're snapping to exactly the right place when you create these dimensions. Let's go ahead now and switch to vertical dimension here. So this is going to just measure the vertical distance between any two points that I snap to in the drawing. So for instance if we come over here I may want to snap so look for the cursor to change there on the top edge so I'm going to click there to snap to that point. Then if I come down to the bottom here I may be looking for the snap point but if I click in the wrong place like here I'm not snapping so it's not all the way to the bottom but I still click at the moment that's going to give me the incorrect dimension so to step back um, so that I can recheck that point there I just right mouse click and that goes back a stage in the dimensioning so now I'm just back to the original point here I can come down and I can make sure I pick the right point so if I click there move this out 
and then click there in order to specify that value. So at any time when I'm in the process of creating a dimension, if I right mouse click, it will step back through so that I can reselect the last point. After you've created a dimension, as I showed you earlier, if you want to get rid of it, you need to hit Control Z. So let's go ahead and work through the other three options we've got for dimensioning a vector drawing. We have the horizontal dimension, which works very similar to the vertical dimension there. So here I might want to pick a couple of points across the circle here and come down and specify that value. Or it may be I want to measure across two different points in the drawing. For instance, we may want to go between this corner and this corner here. And again, we can just come down and click where we want to position that. The next option on the list is to dimension an arc. If we select that, then I can either dimension that externally or internally. To internally dimension an arc, I just click on the arc that I want to add a dimension to. Then I can just move down and wherever I click the arrow is where it's going to place that dimension. So if I click there, you can see it's put in the radius for me. If I want to do an external one, then I can click on the arc here, move it out from there and then just click there in order to add that. So again, to add another one, I can just come over the arc here and down and out from there. Lastly, we have the angle dimension. And the way this works is I specify the center point first in effect of the angle and then one of the lines on the angle and then the other line. So just to show you here, I might pick this node here as my center point and come down the line here and snap to this point to define the first part of the angle and then come up, create a horizontal snap here to define the next line there and then I can just position that within there in order to put that in an appropriate place. So important, I'm going to snap the center point, then one of the lines, then the other line and then the position for my dimension. So it's worth practicing with these just to get the hang of exactly how they work. Now, as I mentioned before, if you make a mistake, you can either undo it if it's the last dimension you created, or if you realize you want to delete one of the dimensions that you've created previously, then you need to make sure that you close the dimensions function and then any of them can be selected individually as if they were vectors. So if I realize I wanted to delete this one, I can just select it and hit delete. As I mentioned before, all these, because we checked the box and provided a name, have been created on a layer called Dimensions. So it's very easy for me using the layer manager to just switch these on and off now. And generally speaking, I would say it's probably good practice to make sure that you create your dimensions on a layer of their own to make it easier to manage them. So that concludes this quick guide to how you can put dimensions on an object in the software. Let's go ahead and save this file as it is so that you can take a look at it if you want. I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and in the Project folder there we'll just call this Widget Dimension and hit Save. And that concludes this particular video.